Hi, welcome to the part 4 of this video series. We are looking at real certification questions related to AC400. You may subscribe to my channel. This channel is dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications. For questions 1 to 12, please refer parts 1 to 3 of this video series. Let's look at question 13. Uh, you may pause the video here to read the question. So abrupt increase in the failed request is the key. So if you look at option A, that is smart detection. If you see this documentation, it clearly says this is the perfect use case. It is used for abnormal rise in the failed request. That is what we need to answer this. So this is part of our summary now. So and we should apply this code. So this is the right answer. Let's look at option B. I try to search for this publicity as a best property. Let's look at C and we have Imagine deprecation of a service. For example, in case of cloud day, uh, remove a service and add a new service. For example, so if you consider iPhone, you know, the older versions like iPhone 6, 7 have been deprecated. And as new versions are added, the old, old versions of the mobile phone is removed or it is out of service. Same way for such scenarios, we use service health. That is one example. So it tracks health events. Let's look at D monitor alert consider there is a virtual machine and uh, the service is stopped that virtual machine is stopped and what if after five minutes the user uses it and they get error on the website because the service is stopped so in order that such event doesn't occur we use azure monitor alert so the target resources can be these and this is how the threshold limits are set. Uh, for example, in this case, if the CPU utilization is greater than 70%, then you will get an alert. If it is less than 70%, you will not get an alert. That means it is primarily used for infrastructure and app issues. It has nothing to do with performance or abnormal rise rates monitoring. So A is our answer. Let's move forward. Let's look at question 14. It's a long question see these are the requirements here these four requirements now as your monitor this is used for app monitoring or infrastructure monitoring but this requirement here include visuals this is not a part of azure monitor so when you're talking about visuals so something of this sort should be displayed this is not possible in azure monitor monitor is a monitoring solution see Power BI is a reporting and visualization solution. It could have fit here, but this requirement, if you see, include visuals from Azure Monitor. If we have Azure dashboards, then uh, in front of Azure dashboard, using Power BI will be not required if we already have Azure dashboards. Hence, B is wrong. C. So C primarily it is used for real-time data. Suppose you have an IoT solution and sensors are sending data real-time and you want to do analysis on top of that real data or streaming data. In that case, we should use Data Explorer. So the use case is data streaming or real-time analysis on large data streaming from applications so our answer is azure dashboard so you have this dashboard creation feature here you can create new dashboards and you can edit the dashboards add new ways to it let's look at question 15 so we need to automate the ui testing of a web application for example, we have flipkart.com and we want to do the UI testing. This is the UI user interface. So we want to do the UI testing of this. So which framework should we use? So this is the thumb rule. Whenever 
we have something like UI testing, Selenium framework is used. So this is the right answer, option B. So Jacoco is a free code coverage library. Based on previous implementations, this is a Java based library that has been created just for the name JA. Xamarin is primarily used for mobile apps. Here we have to use web application, which primarily is a desktop based. If it is a mobile app on iOS or Android, then we could have used Xamarin. And option D, Microsoft Code Analysis. If you have, suppose, a Visual Basic or a C-sharp code, and you need to understand the performance and the design, you want to analyze that, then you can use code analysis. It is not used for UI testing. So this is my final answer. Let's look at question 16. So in short, the question is telling you to do an app health check. Option A is talking about load balancer health probe. We want to do a probing on app 1, not the load balancer. So A is wrong. So one thing that uh, the load balancer health probe does is, usually what happens, load balancers are behind the instances. So load balancer health probe ensures that uh, they route the request to the healthy instance. It's like this. This is the load balancer and these are the three instances. So the load balancer keeps checking the health probe, keeps checking which instances are healthy. Suppose this instance goes bad. So that's why I've marked it as red and blue means only these two instances are healthy. So the health probe will say this instance, third instance is not healthy. So please do not pass any requests here. Only pass the request to these two instances. This is what health probe does. So let's look at option B, monitor auto scale. So auto scale monitoring, how it is done is, suppose these instances are put in an auto scale. Uh, so the moment the load increases, it says, okay, now instead of three instances, I need to add these three more instances okay and if the load decreases and suppose they think that two instances should be sufficing then the monitoring of the auto scale will create two instances it will wipe out the other instances it will only maintain two instances but auto scale will not help you with health check of the app this is not done by auto scale so this Option C, custom script extension. It is very useful in this scenario, post deployment install configure. That means suppose you create this instance, okay, these two instances. Now the moment it got created, after that you immediately have to do some sort of bootstrapping. For example, you want to install Tableau on it or you want to install data stage on it automatically once the instance is created. So in that case, you can create a custom script. So that custom script extension, the moment the deployment is done, it will run and it will install Tableau or it will configure data stage and so on. So here, this will not be useful to uh, monitor the or do a health check of an app. So option D, that is application health extension. This is what is required in this scenario because it does the monitoring of your application health okay and for example one scenario might be managing and upgrading our virtual machines so this is the right answer so let's look at question 17 so in short if i explain this there are two processes like process one and process two and process two is a testing process which is hampering process one process one is the pipeline you need to prevent the failure of process one due to process two now which two actions you have to select two out of these five answers 
let's look at first one flaky set detection see first of all what is a flaky test flaky test uh, in a nutshell uh, if we do first round of testing we certain test cases pass and again if we do second round without any code change without any environment change the test cases fails so it is not a stable test so these test cases will impact your development because your developers will get frustrated sometimes it is passing sometimes it is failing so these will affect the quality of the shift code also like if for flaky tests developers do code change then it will not be good so in this scenario option a will not help because you are putting this off this probably should be on you should not put it off so a is wrong now option b looks correct because it is telling you to clear the flaky tests included in a test pass percentage so suppose the test pass percentage is 92 percent and it also includes flaky test which may be false positive so what it is saying is you remove false positives probably then the total test pass percentage becomes 85 percent instead of 92 percent but which is fine you should not consider flaky test b looks correct see tia the main purpose is if you are doing testing and your code has become very big then regression testing takes a lot of time those test cases execution takes a lot of time so one way is you remove those time consuming test cases but then your code quality may not be good so there is a feature called tia which will just execute the incremental test cases for whatever code changes has been done but in this case we cannot use this because there is no use case matching this uh, option so c is wrong d says manually mark the test as flaky yeah, we can do that this looks correct because the ideally the first option is a bit automated but the second option if you have to choose to we if we know that these four test cases are producing flaky results unstable results you can manually mark them as flaky so we have our, our two answers but let's still look at e which is enable test slicing so if we want to run tests in parallel then we can do test slicing it's just like you have a big bar and you split it and you you can eat it simultaneously in parallel it's just like a big piece of code we split it like in database we create threads we split it and we run everything in parallel instead of sequence so that uh, the job finishes faster same concept here but this will not help you with you know preventing your build pipeline from failing due to the test so let's lock this answer well, let's look at question So it's like you, know, you have a dev box in the code of the dev box and you want to move your code using DevOps or whatever pipelines you want to move it from development to production. So what you only have to move is the performance standards are matched. If the code is not performing, it doesn't run fast for some time, then you should not put it in production. How can this be achieved? If I just use a simple Gate if I just look at the gate seems locked. But do we have a service like a gate or a feature like gate? So this feature is available, it allows automatic collection of from external sources. And it will promote the release. It will promote the release when all features are successful. For example, performance can be one and that is successful, then it will promote. So this is the answer. 
see as your schedule is not helpful to run the job in a particular time trigger it at a particular interval trigger is used to run as your function as your function is server based on the it has no relevance in this case because we need to move that to production the code should comply to the performance standards so it is not about trigger and as a function it is a serverless based on a serverless architecture you can run server programs uh, which can get triggered at a particular time or based on it has no purpose with this because Azure functions will not check if uh, the code is compliant to the performance. Uh, gate is the only available feature in Azure for this purpose. Please subscribe to my channel and like my video. If you have any constructive feedback, please drop in your comments. Please remember this channel is dedicated to help you clear cloud certification. There are n number of videos in the playlist of this channel. Please refer that. This brings us to the end of part 4. See you in the next.